we're gonna get started on chapter nine in this Revit 2021 University of Montana fall class. This chapter is gonna get a little more intensive of adding things and using families and grabbing family files, adding a lot of a lot more components than we've ever done before and many more steps. So I'm gonna skip a few important areas to show you how to do things instead of always doing everything one by one in a couple spots, but we'll continue on. Download your chapter nine files here in Moodle. There's eight files total, seven family files and one forever project file. Submit it here as usual. Um, you should have a total of, I said eight files and let's double check that. So you'll have all these files, most of them family files that are custom that are away from your standard um, family files that downloaded in your C drive that will we'll be bouncing in and out of those a bunch a little later and I'll show you some tricks with that um, to go between these and your standard C drive program file locations. But then of course we start with, let's start and open our um, no experience required chapter nine. And I'm gonna go right into that <clears throat> on page 425. And so we're gonna be starting by creating some ceilings which is pretty easy initially. Um, the biggest advice I think I got into this chapter was we have our floor plans and our ceiling plans. So the biggest difference I would say to think about floor plans is let's say you're standing here on the floor um, and let's say you're an inch tall, size of an ant, or you're six feet tall. Either way, you could pick a perspective. Um, a, fl a floor plan is if that entity, that, that datum was looking down, yourself, whoever, all you would see looking straight down. And the ceiling plan, which we're about to dive into, uh, we're, bounce, we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between ceiling and floor plan a lot on this chapter. It can get a little confusing if you're in the wrong one. Um, look at the icon, slightly different there, that helps. Um, look at your view, what's turned on, that helps. Being critical thinking about that. Um, but think of a ceiling plan. The second thing I said, a floor plan is everything if you look straight down, you'd theoretically see a ceiling plan is the exact opposite. Everything you would see looking straight up um, from wherever you are, it could be the exact floor level. It could be a few feet up. Just think of looking up. That's the way I think about ceiling and floor plans and it helps me really visualize everything you'd see looking in the upward direction on any given floor um, or level. Or building. So let's get started with that in mind. Um, I'll close the level one floor plan. I'm going to leave the level one ceiling plan open. And we're going to start by adding a ceiling. Um, and this is pretty easy. It's a new command. And we're going to go to ceiling. And we're going to start by um, just picking the two by four ACT system. Um, I'm not going to go too far into the material on this one. And we're going to select it as is. And we're going to start by adding ceilings with its boundaries. Um, if we pick it in the type selector, it's going to show red lines where we're going to pick. So we're going to pick everywhere. Really, the picture you want to get to is on the bottom of page 428. We're going to pick everywhere but the bathrooms, which are here and here. So let's start by that. We got it selected. We're not going to put. The one thing, this is really easy, but we don't have a lot of say in the orientation, the direction they go. We'll show you how to rotate ceiling tiles later and the height. We're all we're just gonna put them all at eight. So those are two things we're not having a lot of control of right now. We're just gonna let them all be placed. Pick, pick, pick. Everywhere but the bathrooms and get it to look like page 428. Leave I got everywhere. Um, we're not going to do these areas either in the radial zone. Hit escape. And we're going to do a ceiling for the bathrooms too. I could have left it running, the ceiling uh, command, but we'll open it again. We're going to change this to um, GWB on, on metal stud. We're going to apply that to the bathrooms, not the chases. These are the chases right here, right here, right here, right here. 
least that's how I take it. I, I assume this is a chase for plumbing and whatever other things. Um, there we go. There's our ceilings, they're in place. Um, I might even turn on 3D view real quick. Let's uh, turn that on. We only have them on level one. Let's see if we can see them. You can see we have some ceilings in there. I just clicked the exterior wall and um, you can see it. The ceiling right here. Okay, just to get a visualization. We put it at eight feet, it's eight feet tall. So let's just move on. Um, I'm gonna put it back on an ISO view here. We'll be back in another three view a lot on this chapter. Let's close it for now. Level one. Um, <clears throat> so we didn't have a lot of control of the direction they go or the height yet, but that was pretty easy. Um, so we're gonna transfer, we'll learn how to transfer project standards um, really quick um, types basically. It's, we're gonna do that fairly quick here. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but sometimes they're saying on page 429 that uh, ceiling types are the number one family to be inadvertently deleted from a model, your RVT file for being used. Um, I don't know all the ins and outs of how those get deleted, but I know in AutoCAD and Civil 3D and other programs, um, the styles are easy to get removed and be edited. Um, that's why we have good template files. So those can be uh, grabbed from um, for whatever job you have. So um, real quick, um, how they say that is go to application menu, which is really right here, the file menu. And uh, you go to new project. And uh, I'm gonna start a new project, but we're gonna say, let's find the default template. And really what that means is we go to the browse tab here and it goes to our C drive, our installed fold, fold, uh, files, template files or RTE standard files. That's our default, say okay. Um, we need to browse to it. Let's see, hit okay for now, let's open it. And I didn't, didn't really get this to work 100% correctly. It said, I'm on my laptop right now, so I have the smaller icons rather than my desktop. So it probably looks a lot more like your laptop. If you haven't noticed, sometimes the icons and your ribbon get smaller depending on how big your, your uh, home screen is. Um, still the same icons, they just tend to shrink. Um, let's go to view tab, switch windows in the windows panel. Um, I'm switching between these two drawings. I could switch really quick or I could just hit tabs here. Um, saying go back to our R file. Let's go back to our file here. Uh, no experience required number nine file. And it's saying go to the manage tab. This is how you transfer standards between drawings. Go to transfer project standards. And let's uncheck all or check none. And really we just wanted to copy over um, ceiling types it's asking us in this case. Say, okay. And it copied it over to our template. So that's how you do that. Anyway, let's close the template for now, uh, the blank template and go back to the project at hand. We're gonna modify some ceiling grids. Um, just basically hatch patterns applied to material. That's what the ceilings are. Um, Hatches being a certain pattern and hatch patterns in Revit can be edited on screen more so than other CAD programs, uh, rotated, moved. Um, so that can rotate. We're gonna rotate one to show you that's how the tiles could be set. Um, so let's pick this hatch pattern. Um, let me make sure I have my faces selected on, yep. I'm just gonna pick one ceiling grid line. So I did, or I'll pick another one. Um, that's what it's recommending. And it has my modify commands come up. I'm gonna say rotate. Let me just try to rotate just this one. Curious. Okay, it rotated all of them. So I didn't do it exactly 45 degrees. Um, 
but we can do control Z, try it again. I'll pick uh, I'll pick this one, make it easier. Say rotate. We'll start by my base point down here. I'll go 45 degrees like here. That's my second pick. Escape. My pattern's rotated. Um, and that's all it's showing there. Let's, we're going to take a look um, at the ceiling's properties to see what we're doing. So, like, if you're placing the model, you know, we could have said the exact height we wanted here, replaced it. That's another thing to keep in mind. We didn't. We just let it accept eight feet on all the ceilings. Keep that in mind. It's a pretty important uh, process right there or property to edit is the height of the ceiling, obviously. Possibly be one of the most important besides material. Um, page 432, we're going to set um, some ceiling element properties here. So let's go back to the 3D view. I want to go this quick method here. <clears throat> and I'm going to select this uh, slope roof we made in chapter seven. Um, I'm going to right click it. We're going to show you some view commands to edit how things are shown here. Let's try this. Um, I have it selected. Right click. And this is a new, uh, new if, if we haven't, we've done it maybe once. Override graphics and view by element. Okay. And it brings up another dialog box. And we're going to say this is good to go back. So when you select things, they turn transparent 3D view by default in blue. This will keep it this way until we say otherwise. Say transparency at 50. And I'm going to hit OK. Or if you hit apply, it'll do it and you can still do more things. That's generally what apply and OK mean in most, most Autodesk applications. But if you want to take it all at once and be done, hit OK. So now that roof is 50% transparent, you can see through it, okay? So that can help a lot by picking these walls, which we will later. Good to keep that in mind, that right click option, okay? We can go back and turn it off as well. But we won't do that right now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Let's see, on to page 433 to 434, we're selecting some walls and attaching them to the base to pick the roof. Now, we're just going to pick, from what I can tell, the picture's a little fuzzy, but it really shows it best on the bottom of 434 in the book. Just this one interior partition wall, from what I can tell, which is a 6 and 1 8 partition two-hour firewall interior. Um, let's have it picked. We're going to say attach to top base. We're going to say this roof. There it goes. I believe I got it looking fine. <clears throat> Let's rotate around. It's good to me. Should go up in an angle as it does. That transparent um, property we did helped us tremendously there. Okay. Now, we're going to do the other, in, other interior partitions. Let's, I, I like to do shift and center mouse click at the same time. Shift and center mouse click. So I can rotate a little more freely. And wherever you start on the screen, that's your origin point you rotate about. So if you pick over here, you're going to rotate about this corner of the, of the building. So it's very important where you start to orbit, how, how it orbits. So I like to do pan by just holding my center mouse. I know we've discussed this a little bit, but good to remind you that in case you're doing it another way with the cube or the orbit function here. I like both of them, but I probably like shift and center mouse the best because it's the most efficient for me. Let's pick these center, these interior walls. And we're gonna go to the properties box on this. We say up to level, top constraint to level three. So they went down to level three. Saw them move down a little bit. Strain to level three, the top. Let's reset the roof since we're done in this area of edits, in the west wing. Um, couldn't find the reset button. That's reset crop. So I'm going to go just back here, what I know. 
element. And there it is, actually. This resets to its default values. Hit that. You can slide it manually too, but say undo, redo. That does it as well. So now it's back to opaque, not translucent at all. And okay, all of our ceilings are um, at eight feet. Um, we're going to mess with them a little bit. We're going to go into create a plan region. With this, this area is a little bit new and confusing. Um, it's very much about which direction the view range goes to see what we're creating. Obviously, if you move your ceiling a certain distance and your view range doesn't correspond with it, you will not see your ceiling in the ceiling plan view. Um, we've been learning a lot about view ranges. They're a little confusing uh, at times, but every view is important to set the range where your things will be um, as we've been learning. Otherwise they won't be shown even though they're in the model. So we're gonna be doing that a lot more in this chapter again. So we go to 436, um, let's go to the ceiling plan level one, make sure it's the ceiling plan. And we're gonna zoom into um, this area over here, the side on the west wing and on the view tab, Go to plan views and we're going to do a plan region. This is a new command. <clears throat> Let's let it look here. Creates a plan region within a view. Sketch a closed region. So we're going to sketch. I'm going to do my best to make a rectangle as I interpret it from the book. And uh, we basically say this sketched area, we have a certain view range. Um, multiple plan regions on top of each other cannot overlap one another but they can be coincident. So it's saying here, I'll let this load again. They can touch each other, but they can't overlap. That's what that means. Okay, so we're gonna make one. And I kind of interpret this that we're gonna make a rectangle all the way around this. And you can't really make an arc here. <clears throat> it's not a drawing option. It has to be some kind of square rectangle. So if you guys find a different way, that's fine, but this is how I interpreted everything in the book. Um, basically, I'm gonna update my picture on 437 to show where I drew it for future use of this. Um, the inside face wall, so let's do that. We can do this, pick a wall for this one. So that, that, here, and here. You could do the single line as well. That'll do for now. Um, let's use our grips. And we read that again. Finish face. Oh, it says finish face of exterior walls. Okay. So it kind of is showing on, on 437. It really looks like to me um, the interior. So let's just go with this. I didn't find it that it was that harmful. Um, Drag this, I wanna use the trim command. Keep, pick the two things you want. The other things go away. Pick the two things you want, thing goes away, okay. So we have a closed sketch, no gaps, no overlaps, no extra lines. And let's see what they want next. This is a new, was a newish step for me too, to make a region of, very unique to a, uh, one area we want to have a different view range is essentially what we're doing. Okay. Um, while we're still in sketch mode, we're going to go properties, edit, the view range, and look at the picture on the bottom of 437. I, a lot of times I'm getting really familiar with this. The cut plane is right here on two. It goes down and up. And five is its entire range. Seven is the entire view range, okay? So we're gonna set it to how our tiles will eventually go. 14 feet six for the entirety of the cut plane and offset there. The view depth, the entirety of the view depth, 16 feet now. Number seven, view depth, or excuse me, view depth is here, how deep it goes, lower, subterranean. View range is the entirety of both. So the primary range centered about the cut plane right here on two, primary range. And number six, the view 
depth, but them together, both is the view range. So I just want to take a little more time to talk about that. Here's its top, here's its bottom of the cut plane. And we're not doing any additional offsets off of those. So this is what your options should look like. Let's hit okay. Oops, forgot to set this one, the bottom. Seven space six, seven feet six inches, hit okay. Let's check my levels. Level one, oh, level three there. There we go. Had a couple settings even missing. Thank God for the book on that one. I've been going back and forth on my own until I, that's kind of, it's a trial and error with a lot of those view ranges. It takes a little bit to get used to the terms and what to do. A lot of what you do is you see what things show up on your view helps you out and you can figure it out. But thankfully the book spells some of it out for us. Um, so let's go to finish edit mode. We're done with that. Um, okay, we don't have a full intersection. We need to check that out. Let me check my lines. I thought they were closed. Looks like I have an extra line, see? Easy to do. I might've picked that line twice. Very easy to do this extra lines. Let me try it again. Let me see if I even have another one. Nope. So that stopped me. I had an extra line I couldn't see and they were both on top of each other. That'll hold you up. Looks like I have another one there. Let's check and see if I got another one. Yes, I do. I had several extra lines there. Hit undo. Let's get these ready for trimming. This is good to see though. Escape. That one is by itself. Let's see if there's an extra one. Nope. Okay. So I got rid of my extra lines. It warned me. So trim, keep what I want. Should work now. I hope so. There we go. So my cut plane is this dashed blue line. We'll be messing with it in a minute. Um, and it's done. Now I have a plan region. It didn't seem like maybe we did anything in the plan, but when we place the ceiling at 14 feet and six inches soon, you'll be able to see it. That's essentially why we did that. We said this area, I wanna see a specific view range. When we place the ceiling tiles here, you're gonna be able to see it now. The view range is gonna be different in this area of the building. We made a unique area here. That's what we did. Um, on level one ceiling plan, let's zoom into, I'm gonna concentrate on this room. This, these steps get pretty deep here. I'm gonna to try to go slow. Um, and then later, um, from page 447 to 453, they get a little detailed as well. Um, and if I mess up a small detail, I'm not going to be too concerned. Um, they mainly get very step-driven upcoming here. We're not going to accomplish a ton of things. There's a lot of steps to what the book's trying to accomplish. So bear with me. Um, Let's turn off 3D view for now. Let's stay on level one ceiling plan and the architecture tab, the ceiling area, open that. And on the type selector of the ceiling, let's go back to GB, uh, GWB on metal stud. And we're gonna have that, which is our last one we did. So it'll be the last one selected. Gonna edit the type. This is a little big. Um, since I'm on my laptop, I'm going to shrink this down a little in case we want to see the preview. Okay. Um, it wants us to duplicate this as our base. We're going to make a new type. We're going to call this wood veneer on metal framing. This material. Okay. And I'm going to go to edit, pay close attention to the figure on 9.17 on page 439. And let me go to this one, say insert. It goes above. It's kind of weird. Wanted to go below. So I'm going to say down here. And it didn't pick what I wanted to. 
for finish two five. I want that. So get that set. Now let's change it. The gypsum should be above it. Five ace gypsum, AKA sheet rock. Let's go deep into the material now. We're gonna apply the wood mahogany veneer. Okay, this is where it gets a little more tense. Try to go slow. Um, finish two, five. Okay inserted it, we moved it down at the very end of page 438, got it in the right spot because it's going to be on the outside, the wood veneer. Let's go to the material browser now. Let's start with typing in cherry here. Correctly spelled, I didn't win any spelling bees, I guess. Got that. And let's start by clicking the use render appearance. Or start with cherry as our render appearance. I gotta go a little slow through this area. There's a lot of steps. <clears throat> Change this to wood one. Hmm. I typed drafting, that seemed to find it better. Um, Dialog to the right, yep, pattern. Just making sure I have everything. It's interesting. Um, so do that in the right order, pick the cherry, Make sure you got these colors. Um, I did something in the wrong order there. It should be RGB 233-182-144. You might be able to type it, but the way I pick this, pick this, click that in the right order, what I just previously did, it sucked these characteristics in from the cherry for the color. That was kind of the purpose of that. Um, It's a, it, this is going to be a cherry veneer plywood ceiling. My mistake, we're going to do mahogany later. And let's find this again. Type W. Lots of hatch patterns, wood one. And on the cut pattern, the foreground, we're going to do plywood. This is getting pretty deep in the edits, but at least they're walking us through it to change materials and hatchings. And that's looking good. OK. Let's get our thickness applied, half an inch. So I like to do this with double quotes. Hit enter, make sure it's a half an inch, not a half a foot. Check yourself here. Hit okay. Hit okay on our wood veneer and metal framing. I would have preferred maybe calling it cherry wood veneer, but whatever. Um, before we place it, in this case, I'm gonna be a little more surgical. Say 14 space six, 14 feet, six inches. Where we apply it. I'm gonna place it here. The red comes up. There it is. We place the ceiling in that room. It took 21 steps plus to get to this stage, making all this. So that was why I went a little slow. Um, in the adjacent rooms, we're going to add the same ceilings on page 442, same height. Um, so we'll just continue. I left this. Um, command open, Let's just keep going. You can back pedal back into it if you needed to. Um, I got all the rooms, cherry veneer, wood ceiling, escape twice, there we go. So we're on to page 443 um, after we got some more ceiling added to this area. We got our plan region. So we could specifically see at this height before we place the ceilings. Okay. Um, now, if you don't like the ceiling you added, a lot of times, let me turn on my face command. Remember that from floors right here. So I can select things like ceilings and floors easier, right? 
Uh, if I don't like what I got here, totally edit the boundary in. Um, cancel. And or you could go into ceiling here, ceiling command in the architecture tab. And before the I just did automatic ceiling, I let it do it and it found it, right? You could put it in a very specific area by sketching it. Sketch it in with sketch mode. Whatever shape you want. So keep that in mind. We didn't do that. We just use the automatic one for instructional purposes, but you have two options there. Sketching it in automatic to a shape, walls, whatever you have. Okay, um, creating ceiling openings and soffits. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's very seldom, it's basically saying a ceiling that we don't require a little bit of modification in some area, like a cutout or an area for a big light or a pipe chase or mechanical plumbing kind of stuff. So. Um, we're going to create a ceiling opening in the level one ceiling plan here, a uh, circle. There's some weird steps in this one too, quite a few. This is another challenging part of this chapter, all the way to page 453. We do a lot of new patterns and adding stuff. So I'm going to try to go through, if I make a couple mistakes, I wouldn't stress it. Um, otherwise, it could take me forever backtracking. So let me get, get through this. Um, i start at level one ceiling plan still. We're zooming to this area still. Northwest of this building, we're going to primarily concentrate in this, this room. Um, let's select the ceiling. Remember, I turn on my select face so I can easily select it without having to grab everything, maybe use filters. Um, let's just have the select face on. And we'll go back to the edit boundary button, which I was just telling you about in the modify ceilings. The magenta lines. We're gonna place some reference plans to help me sketch in some stuff accurately while we're in sketch mode here. We're going to snap to the mid, or you can type in SM, but mine came up with snap. I only need really get to get one to snap to the mid. Uh, this one's a little trickier there. Look like it went, I wanna use this wall because this is not truly in the middle of the whole room, right? Down here, this is my midpoint snap symbol, endpoint, intersection point, midpoint. Okay, it's okay if they go a little further off. It's this intersection we're concerned with. Help us place our circle. We've got those in place. Hit escape a couple of times. We're back to properties. Um, or, or we're in sketch mode, raw sketch mode. Um, we're gonna say draw circle now. And I want to choose this intersection. Intersection snap comes up. And I want the radius to be four feet. You can pull it in any direction. You can just type in four or hover like this. Okay. Now it just wants us to finish edit. Makes a hole there, our ceiling tile. We're going to create a soffit. So Soffits are nothing more than walls with a base offset. So walls and a ceiling. Let's even see what comes up if I type in Google. I got some Topher lights we're going to add in later. I was trying to visualize for you guys. Um, so it's kind of like a area above. Um, soffits also on the exterior of a eave of a roof. Maybe we type in soffit ceiling. It's just different areas um, of different elevations on top of uh, a ceiling um, for pipe chases, for whatever. Okay. Um, this is soffits for the exterior eaves of building and fascia, fascia. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that, but this is for our ceilings. So Topher lights for later or Trofer light. Anyway, um, let's go back to our model. And we're going to make a wall, actually. Wall architecture tab. We're going to change it 
wants us to save, that's fine. Give it a second. In case I crash, you never know. I always save. Um, let's switch the wall though. We got all of our walls. Let's go to the interior. 31 eighth partition, um, one hour wall. Let's uh, check my options. Let's do my base offset here. In this case, to 14 feet. We start at 14 feet from the base of level one. That is our base, level one, 14 feet from it. Enter. We have that set okay top constraint where it's going to go to here to level three it applies on its own if you hover off you can also hit apply to be sure here we're ready to place the soffit now into the radial hole so um basically after we have our, our settings set we're going to do the pick lines command um Back to my modify here. And it should find the whole line. So I got to hover in here. Um, make sure it's going over the center. And key here is to let me go in closer. Hover in here. I'll hit tab. Hit tab a couple of times. Bounce between these. See how I get both of them? If I'm hitting tab and I hover. You can also hover to the outside. We don't want it out here. That's not where we want our soffit ceiling. We want it in the interior in this case. So go to the interior, hit tab a couple times, make sure you got the whole circle, then hit left data click. Okay. Hit escape twice. We got our ceiling. So um, let's continue on. And we're going to add a secondary ceiling to the inside of the soffit here. This is where it gets even more complex, like a mahogany veneer into the middle of this. Um, we're still in level one ceiling plan, architectural tab, go back to ceiling. And we're going to do an edit type at our wood veneer, which is a good base point start. We're going to make another one, but this is with mahogany veneer on top of the other ceiling. We'll say duplicate. Um, Take off the two. It likes to default that just because um, can't have duplicate types in a model. Okay. <clears throat> let's go to edits. Make sure previews on helps. Um, let's check all of us here. Got everything. Gypsum was the outside. This is your gypsum wood veneer. Let's check this. Let's look here. Um, this, this step gets a little long. We're probably not gonna be able to find mahogany unless you found a complete file of this. So this, this is where this gets a little long. I'll bear with me. Mahogany, not there. So we don't have mahogany. We're going to create one. Um, not really good at showing where this is. This is where you go right here. Okay. Create materials for figure, um, 9.29 9 on page 450. Um, let's hit it. Um, one second. So I had to hit here to open the asset browser next. We're trying to make a new material. Um, asset browser. I might have, because I've made this in a previous one, um, mahogany. Yeah. Let's just pretend like I'm doing it again for you guys' sake, because you probably don't have it made already. Um, let's go to default. Default new material.
Hmm. It's mahogany here. Up. Oh. Well, I have the mahogany here. If you didn't have it, uh, follow through very closely on the steps on page 450. 451, um, adding it here first. We'll say create new material. That's the one I missed. Hit this down arrow and say here, okay? Um, we start with this. Let's make another one called Mahogany 2. Say this, rename. Let's call it mahogany number two, because I already had it. Start with that. Then we're going to go to the asset browser here. We're going to go to mahogany. Probably start typing it in too. There we go. Um, there are a lot of material stuff of all kinds of woods and stuff here to apply to materials for rendering. We'll go here. Um, there we go. I double clicked it, added it. And now let's go back here. I have a second one I made just for you guys. I already have mahogany from previous jobs I've done before I did this video. Um, I'm pretending like you guys don't have it. That's why I made this one. And we went to the back of the graphics tab. Probably can close this asset browser down. And you're basically mimicking the steps on page 452. These are some of the deeper steps in this chapter. Don't feel bad if you're frustrated by it. Um, let's change these to the picture on page 452. And the foreground, change this to plywood on the back side. This can close, this can close. Um, it's okay that we leave this at half an inch of veneer, that's fine. Okay, actually, one option I'm not sure if I did right. Um, I had to click this. Yeah, I think I did, let's see. Yeah, leave it that way, click that button. Okay. Um, we're gonna change this to a slightly different uh, level. It's gonna be inset. It's not currently visible, which is great. Makes this example even more complicated. You have a warning. Um, so how we do how do we do this hit escape i gotta change the view range again at or below 14 feet one inch let's try that Top clip plan. I'm just putting options in there just to get this to go through. 
back to ceiling. The one we just made here. Let's try to place it again. View range real quick. Depth. Let's just say I'm limited. Try ceiling again. Frustrating. So I probably have a bunch of walls in there. Let's try that again. View range for level one top. This worked last time. I just put this at 14 feet, one inch. Um, and I placed a ceiling and it worked. Very frustrating. Um, so when I placed this, I edited the ceiling plan at level one. Edit this view. Let's just put it unlimited, unlimited. I literally almost just changed that only. I place the ceiling and went just fine. So let's hit undo a few times. <clears throat> and let's go back, new range. Don't really care as long as I can get through this. Unlimited, unlimited, 14 feet, one inch. Ceiling, mahogany. I'm not sure why it's not giving me an option to uh, do the height. Um, let's try this. Oh, yeah, I have different view range right inside of this. So this is my problem. Edit here. Let's change this to 14 feet, six inches. I'm changing just this plan region, this rectangular box. Easy to miss this. There it goes. I probably have tons of ceilings in here now. Yeah, I have a pile of them. I kept putting them in there. Let's delete a few of them. It just wasn't seeing them. Okay, I'll leave the last one. Hover in here. Looks like I'm good. I have one little ceiling in there. So. I was trying to change the view range of my entire level one ceiling plan. What I should have been changing was this plan region. I almost forgot I did this once. So click on this plan region, then edit its view range. Only change this from 14 feet, six inches to 14 feet, one inch. So it will show this. You were making this, it was airing out, but it was saying you can't see it, but it will be there. I made it four times there. So probably one of the more difficult steps in this entire chapter to follow through with. There we go, final appearance. Um, never assume anything it's saying. So that means is let's double check this, make a section view here, or we can go to view section. We get close-ish to the center of this. Let's make a section view facing the north. Let's open it, take a look. That's what you should have going on. Ceiling going this direction, this direction inside of the ceiling here. Okay. I'm going to change this to fine and realistic just because. There we go. Um, we're just check, we're just double checking what we did. Uh, I'm going to call this section uh, now that I'm in it. 
still in the section view here. Let's just rename it here. Apps. Section at West Training. Go check and verify. I know I kind of like this back to hidden line. Let's turn that off now. Leave our section view there. And we're ready to add some light fixtures to the ceiling. This is uh, gonna get kind of fun. Um, so we're still in the level one ceiling plan. We're gonna go to the architecture tab, add a component. And we're gonna be adding a lot of components upcoming here. So bear with me, I'm gonna try to skip to new files. Um, we're going to go into um, load family. We're going to be doing this a lot. We're going to bounce between this a lot. So get ready for it. Um, we're lighting. I like to type L, brings me right to it. Architectural, internal light. And we're going to look for pendant light. Let's type in P, bring us down there. Pendant light disk family. Check your preview, that can be helpful. Open, it is now loaded in our model. Once you load it the first time, it will be the next one to be selected. And these cascade in alphabetical order. See, passage, P, R. So keep that in mind as you're looking for it, as you get a lot of families in a, in a model, the cascade in alphabetical order. We're gonna get a lot more in. Um, we're ready to place it. So um, we're just saying, they're saying, oh, place it in some willy-nilly spot like that. Okay, and now let's let's move it surgically. We select it again. Modify light fixture. We'll say move. Can, that's probably the center. It's also saying type in SC to make sure. Sometimes it's hard to get center to override over endpoint and midpoint. So type in SC. That's your snap center circle icon. Um, feel free to type in SC again. There's your center. Sometimes you can get it to pop up by hovering, but knowing your snap aliases will make sure it only goes to that snap. That's all that was doing. Hit escape. Now we got that uh, located in there. Um, we're gonna copy it over now. We're gonna use this a bunch, say copy. And we're just gonna copy it three feet to the right and left. So we could, it kind of wants us to go in the section view. We could do it in this plan view too, copy it over. Let's go back to the section view. That's what it's saying. This is how we better visualize it. So I'm in the section view I just made. Select the same light fixture, Say copy. And it doesn't really matter where I pick as long as it goes three feet. So let's just pick somewhere out here in space. You can pick somewhere exact this endpoint, as long as you move it three feet from wherever you start. Let's do it again, hit escape, pick the center object, hit copy, pick somewhere. As long as you go three feet to the left, three, enter, escape. There's our light fixtures on our recessed ceiling there. <clears throat> um, so we're past 456 into 457. Um, we're at the end of 457. We're going to take, rotate these, we'll make some more. We're going to grab this one and this one. And we're going to rotate them. But we're also going to copy them. That's key to have this option selected so it doesn't delete the old ones. Let's pick somewhere out here horizontally as our base point. Don't select this the section line, select here, click and go 90 degrees. Click again, got two more. There we go. So we got a bunch of fixtures and they should be right in line with this one. So you can't really even see them. But if I deleted this one, you should still see one. I'll undo that. This helps us see it better in the plan view. So showed you how to add some light fixtures to a ceiling. We're gonna add some interior design options. Um, 
this might be the one of the more difficult parts of this because um you know we're gonna be adding a lot of things a lot of options and get pretty task intensive so um, what we're going to start with is adding some plumbing fixtures and furniture and the first thing we're going to add is some plumbing fixtures into the bathroom one bathroom anyway we're not going to add both right now but just one um, we're going to use some more families so let's go back to floor plan level one let's have that open let's just be careful going between the two um let me turn this section off. Let's just have floor and ceiling plan level one open side by side. I'm going to do a zoom extents. Let's hit save. Ceiling plan. We'll be bouncing between the two quite a bit. So back to floor plan. Looking at the floor and we're going to add some plumbing fixtures. Um, they want us to turn off the thin line mode. I have no idea why um, necessarily, but we'll just oblige them. Turn it off. The walls get thicker, basically. And we're going to, we made this call out view. We'll double click it, access it. Typical men's lavatory, it's called. Probably turned it off because we're going zoomed in more the thin line mode. See our grid still in here about our columns. Um, let's stay in this view and we're going to go into um, insert. Get used to seeing this starting with insert load family. And let's learn to go back a couple steps. So this is my default families area. This is where I'm at. I have a shortcut saved in my next to my labs to get to here quick. It's your C drive if you're in Windows. Program data, Autodesk, RVT 2020 libraries, and here's all my families within the Imperial, not metric. So this is my home base of all my default ones. I'll show you soon when I bought between this area and where I save my custom ones we downloaded at the beginning of this chapter, the, the seven other ones. That'll be a key step. Um, so we go to plumbing. Architectural fixtures, water closets, and let's see which type of toilet. Toilet commercial wall, 3D, yeah, 3D. Check your preview, that helps a lot. Open, now that's in our drawing as an option, as a component. Um, we're gonna just do one right now. Back to architecture tab component. We just loaded it, so it'll be the first one to come in, okay? It's ready to go. Um, I don't think there's any other, let's see. There is two options to the seat height on this one. Make sure the 15 inch seat height's selected and it should be by default. Let's just bring this in here, hover it close to the wall. Use your blue dimension, see on the right. Let's just get it close, six inches, there we go. Place it, it moves it off the wall, escape. <clears throat> so we're not gonna, I like how the book says it, we're not gonna design a military barracks with, uh, with open public uh, urinals and toilets, like a military barracks in the 50s. So we're gonna put some stalls. Um, we're gonna find a bunch of stuff that the book we downloaded now, which is should be in a safe spot where you put. This is mine's here in my labs where I put for this class. Put them in an organized spot. Stay organized with this, or you're going to get turned around. We're going to access these. So we're going to do the same thing we did when we're going to our C drive, and um, let's go load these. So let's go back to insert load family, and now go to your spot where I was just talking about, wherever it may be. Mine's on my external hard drive in this class. I'm going fast through this because you're gonna to go to a different spot. So possibly try to load all of them. Let's try that. I 
think that will work. Try to load them all at once, let it think. Give it a minute. Hope I don't crash. It seems to have worked. So maybe you only have to do that once. Instead of doing one at a time on page 460, the toilet stall, accessible side, front, brace, grab bar, double sink. Try to load them all at once like I just did. Um, now we're gonna place it. Let's see. We'll find out soon if that worked. Okay, place component. Seems like they're all in here. We're gonna go with the first component, toilet stall accessible front 3D 60 by 60 clear. Here it is. It's a little bit bigger, handicap stall, what have you. Hover in here so it shows, get it close-ish, left click. And flip it and shit. Okay. You can also use the space bar as you place things. There we go. Um, let's add another toilet by grabbing this one. We're going to add the regular size stall. We'll say copy. Anywhere in space, as long as we go five feet. This is, this is reference. Five feet, which we had. I'm just typing it, be deliberate. And we're going to add another component, toilet stall of a different size. This one instead is 29 by 60 clear. Let's see. Looks like it grabbed them. When I grabbed all these families, it grabbed them all at once. Um, here we go. Three-sided toilet stall. So this one wants to come in backwards. Not really. Actually, that door should go that way. I'm going to hit space. That's what it does. Place it right there. Should automatically go. It was. Let's try that again. Didn't like something. I didn't get quite to the edge there. Um, hit move. Let's try this. If you don't get it perfectly, you can move it so it's coincident with each other. Okay. Two toilets and stalls in place. Um, I loaded all the families at once. We're going to load some ones uh, later back in our C drive. We'll go to that in a minute. We're going to add a grab bar. So let's place a component again. Let's see if it found the grab bar. Type in G. There. There it is. Right here. Let's hover on this wall. Good enough. Um, you can also type when you pick the grab bar or when you're placing it, you can also tell it what height it is in this case. So I, I, let me grab that one. Um, I just have the grab bar selected. I can say, hey, I want you to be two feet from the level one. It knows it's on level one. I'm just moving the height. That's good to know, for some, especially something like this. That's what that's saying. Um, we added the grab bar. We changed the properties inside of it. You can do that as you're placing it too, okay? So as I'm placing another grab bar, let's say right here, wherever, I can change this property right now beforehand. Hit escape twice. Let's go back to um, insert. I don't think there's a urinal in here yet. Um, yours probably not. I might have mine in here because I've done this already. It looks like not. I typed in UR for the beginning of urinal, Hit escape. That means we got to go bring it into the model. Insert, load family. Let's go back. So now I'm where it defaults to where my custom files were. We got to go back to my C drive. So that can be a little tricky. It's kind of buried deep. Well, luckily, I was had the forethought at one point to put a shortcut. So this will help you out. Here's my shortcut to my C drive families. So I'm going to go to the shortcut. Here they are, US Imperial, our home base. This is where you go. If you don't have that shortcut, make a shortcut in Windows if you can put it somewhere handy. It's program data, Autodesk, RVT 2020 libraries, US Imperial. That's your path, five or six folders deep. I'm back here. Um, 
should stay here for a while. I uploaded all the custom ones we downloaded with this chapter. Don't think I'm gonna go back and forth again. Um, right now we're looking for the urinal, plumbing, architectural fixtures, urinals, um, urinal 3D. There it is, hit open. Now let's go to arc tab, place component again. It will be the last one since this one I did. You don't even have to look for it. Let's just get it close here, whatever. Two feet, six inches, I think. Here we go. Look at your blue dimensions, your temp dimensions, hit escape. We're gonna add a sink. Looking for a type of component. Let's look at S, sink, sink vanity round, 19 by 19 inches. It should be the only one. Let's place it here. It will indeed probably be flipped. Flip this four directions by hitting space. Just place it right about here. Perfect. Escape. Okay. Um, we added one bathroom. This, this stuff could easily be mirrored um, over here. Let me hit shift. Um, mirrored to the other side, I believe. So I'm going to hit save. Let's go back to floor plan level one. Let me give that a quick try. Maybe if I do a, a pick oh, this direction, if I just hold control and pick a few things. Pens. I do have my middle reference plane still to mirror about. And it depends if what you're mirroring is completely symmetrical, of course. This should be, but uh, actually let's find out. Mirror, mirror about, and it did it. Looks pretty good, it missed this one, but that's okay. Um, maybe I didn't select it. Let's try it again. Mirror, mirror about. It's not perfect. So that one, it's not exact. So sometimes you gotta add these manually. Mirror work pretty good though there. Um, Let's move on to ceiling parabolic uh, trophers. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Oh, well, uh, ceiling lighting fixtures. So we're gonna add some stuff like this to our ceiling tiles. Ours are gonna look more like this, I believe. Parabolic um, trophor LED lamps. Let's back to model space. And we're gonna go back to the ceiling plan. So let's turn off the men's lavatory. We're done for now on that. Let's go back to our level one ceiling plan. Zoom in here. Interesting. I might have to go back and reset this. I messed up my um, view range a little bit. I'm not seeing what I want to see here. Um, that was me trying to get this all to work on this mahogany area. Let me go to a file I know I have done real quick. Bear with me for a second on that. check my settings. Yeah, the view range is gonna be frustrating like that. Um, ceiling plan level one. This one I think I have set correctly. Okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. This can also be a good tip if you really get one jacked up like I did. Minimize that. Let me go back to changing this one on floor plan. OK. 
Okay. Oh, level two, level two, four feet. Okay. That is a lot of different settings. Back to the file at hand that we're working on together. Okay. Let me double check these above level two, level two, four feet. Okay. Zero, zero, four. So if you mess up your settings, this is what they should be on your level one ceiling plan. Let's, should work there. Um, I didn't intend to do that. It was when I was trying to, so just double check, make sure you got these correct. Um, I was trying to get this mahogany to work over here and I failed to edit the, the view range of just this plan region. So be careful with that, editing your entire floor or that plan region. Now I'm back to seeing what I want. So now we're gonna add some light fixtures. Um, I'm gonna add the first couple and then I'm gonna fast forward to a new file with them all done. Um, just for instructional purposes, I'm gonna to have to add 90 plus lights and then 25 plus lights. So we're gonna to go to um, insert again, load family. Then we're gonna find, go back a couple steps to our home base, US Imperial, right? And type in L for lighting. It'll go to the L's first, architectural interior. And T, let's start with that, go to where they are. It is a two by four parabolic. So there's our visual of it. Like, okay. Um, we're about to place it. So let's go to architecture, place component. We've done this a lot now. It's the last one we did. So let's just put it in here. Now it's saying we got some options. We're gonna use the align command put this first one in. We're going to put it right here. First, we're going to get the one direction, then another. Um, doesn't matter what you do, but the picture on 466 will be the final appearance of it. We'll put it in this tile. So let's select the object, then I'll say align. I'll say what I want it to align to. Let's say this direction first. This is what I want. This is what I want to align. Goes there. It's still going. This is what I want it to align to. This is the object to align. There we go. There's our first one. And we're going to place 90 plus of these, okay? Um, all over the place on pay, the bottom of page 466. So I'd recommend, let's do the first couple together. Getting this one, the weird angled one, which I think that's the only one. But then let's do one vertical one and one horizontal one. And then you can copy them around. So it's hard to get them to go exactly where we want. So let's do one horizontal. And um, let's pick it, let's hit a line. Oops, wrong order, pick it, line. What do I want it to align to? This, and that's what I want to align. Same, let's just say um, this and that. I know it's supposed to go over here. I'm just showing you quick in this tile. And then you can basically move that around or you can hit copy and move any, any spot where this is in the same horizontal tile, like over here, wherever, you can copy it um, to those. So it's, select the object, copy, grab an endpoint, be surgical, endpoint, and move it to another tile endpoint right there. It did not work. Let me delete. Let's try move this time. Snap endpoint. That almost worked better. So I hit move. Get one in place. And then you're looking for intersections like this, midpoints, usually intersections or midpoints. Just move them about one at a time. 
It's going to take you a while. Um, and get a vertical one going. So I'll place another one, texture component, and then copy that one around. So let's just place one in the vertical area here. Um, let's see if I can get this one going. Type in a line. Let's say I want this to be my alignment. Not cooperating. I try to rotate the object. So this might be more successful. Rotate, physically rotate it 90 degrees. That's what I would do. And then align it. The book doesn't tell you this much. You've got to kind of figure out your own, which can suck, but. So I rotated it first. Now I'm going to align it. Let's start with aligning it to this line. That. This is what I want. This is the side I want it to go to. Now you have one in the vertical direction. You can copy this to all the areas on the bottom of page 466 to all the tiles, say in this direction to where they want. Okay. So start with getting these going, getting a vertical and a horizontal. Do this one first, make one here and wherever you need to, and then copy them about with the copy command and move command to all over the floor. So I'm going to close this file. Um, I'm going to open one that this is already done. Say yes to this. Um, we're going to add some sconce, some scone slides um, also, and they're going to only be visible from floor plan the level one floor plan. Um, and I'll show you in a minute. So part two, let's restart like I had them all done. So I don't have to take forever you watching me do that. So this is the final completion. They're all done on this level. Um, now on page 467, we're going to load a load a family of um, insert load family. We're still in the lighting area, and we're going to load sconce light upright right here. We're going to upload these. I already have them uploaded. It says it's overwriting it because I already have it in my model. You would have it uploaded for the first time, so don't ignore that. And I'm going to place those um, by going, make sure you go to level one floor plan. These ones go at not the ceiling level. We'll see what that means in a minute. I have them placed here already, all over too. Place them just as close as you feel like. Don't get it exact. There's about 20 plus of them here, here. The picture is on, the final picture is on 468 on the top. Here and here, there's more of them in the middle of this corridor here, okay? And there's more of them on each corridor area. You can see them. And just place them um, close as you can um, by going to architecture tab, component, and let's type in SC, get close right here, and just start placing them around, okay? I'm just gonna add a few more just for fun. Okay, that's all you're doing. I just haven't placed already. Hit a few extra ones. I'm gonna hit Control Z, undo that. That's what you're doing there. Take your time to do that. Now we're gonna take a look at our, our new hallway in the perspective area. Um, that old view we did, remember we did a camera view here looking this direction. Let's go back to that. It's gonna look a lot different now by going to the project browser, 3D views. We already had this done. So here it is, it's still there. A lot going on now compared to where we last saw. Um, here's our, our, I just, I'm gonna call them scone lights. Um, sconce lights, and we can see our floor, our ceiling, our trophy parabolic interior lighting. Um, we got our doors. We don't wanna see these structural columns in this view necessarily. They are in here. We're gonna remove those. So. Um, 
we got a lot of that going on. So let's type in VG. This is a new command. Pretty cool. There's probably in the manage area somewhere, but I like how it just turns this on. So I typed it in. We can decide exactly in this view what we want off surgically. Um, in this case, we're going to say we want these structural columns off. Hit, hit apply unless you want to do more, but okay, that's the only one we want. And they disappeared. So that's all that's doing. It's showing what we want in this perspective view, um, which is great. This helps us visualize um, what's going on. So where we were looking was right here, down this hallway, basically, on level floor plan level one. Um, now we're ready to start adding some casework and some furniture. This is going to be a pretty thorough area, too. Um, we're back on floor plan level one. Um, we're going to add a bunch of stuff in here and the kitchen here uh, to end the chapter for the most part. Now, we're going to add a bunch of stuff um, on page 470, some cabinets, some furniture, some executive chairs, credenzas, entertainment center shelves. Um, let's start by adding all those. So do what we've been doing and go to the insert tab, load family. Let's go back a couple out of lighting backspace. And let's start with the casework. Let's get all these. And base cabinets, in this case, we're gonna load base cabinet four drawers. And let's see if there's anything else in here. No, not for now. We're gonna go to furniture, we'll say, okay, loaded that. Let's load families again. Let's go back one. And we're gonna go to furniture this time. Back again, seating. Chair executive, we're gonna load that. Let's load another one. Let's go back. And what do we need next? Furniture storage area, we need three things. Furniture, storage, we need a credenza, entertainment center and shelving. I think that should do it. Grab all three, it should all three load. It'll take a little longer. Get them all at once at once. Now we're ready to add them. Architecture tab, component. That was the last thing we added was the entertainment center. First thing we're gonna add is the credenza. So you can start typing it here. Helps you find it quicker. Let's do the 72 inch by 24 inch. We're gonna place it uh, right here, close enough. Hit okay, or not okay, hit escape. Um, escape again. Let's put in that chair now. So architecture tab component. Pull this down. Go to the search area. Say, start typing in chair. It's probably one of the only ones we got in here in this model. Grab it. Let's place it close-ish. There we go. Hit escape twice. Component again. Pull down our types. Search again. Um, Once say entertainment center to the left and wants four shelving units. Let's do the entertainment center. And it wants the entertainment center of this size, this bigger size. Um, you gotta hit options to flip it. Let's get it close-ish right there is good. Hit escape twice, hone it again, pick type again. Um, you could scroll and find it like this. Highly recommend if more models you get or families you get to type what you think it is. We're gonna do um, <clears throat> shelving, uh, the 36 inches right here. I'm gonna add four of them. Let's just uh, relatively close, good enough. Here we go. Okay, we got our four shelves in there. Let's take a look at what we just did by going to the view, um, 3D view, camera. Let's pick somewhere in this corner, left click. Let's pull through to this direction through the wall. Opens it up automatically. Um, first of all, let's pull our area out so we can see more of it. Our grips, that should be good enough. Um, 
Yeah, we got those columns showing. We could do that. Type in VG again and go down to structural columns, turn those off. They disappear, as you saw. Um, let's change this to fine. Let's change it to realistic. Got our office going on. Um, they want us to save this view. So we're already in the view. Or you can see it here pop up. We just made a new one. We can also rename it here by double clicking slowly. We'll call it uh, perspective of corner office, some executive office, I guess. Enter, save that view. Looks great. Remember you can uh, shift, oops. <laughs> Depends how big it is. You can you can orbit within these views with shift and center click. It obviously can orbit outside the building. We found this out a couple chapters ago. Um, you can go above, and that's part of the reason you might want to you know expand it out a little bit. But that's kind of handy. They're dynamic views. They're not just static. In this way as well, you can pan around by orbiting. So let's leave that view. Um, we're gonna start adding stuff to the kitchen down here. And let's upload a bunch of casework items. There's a base cabinet of multiple types um, with double doors, sink units, filler. Basically there's seven uh, things to upload now. And I'm gonna to try to grab all of them. I think they're all in the casework directory in the same spot. Let's see how many we can get at once. And then there's one more we got to add from our custom ones in our C drive, or not our C drive, but our files we downloaded just for this chapter. Back twice, his work. Let's go to base cabinet. Let's see how many of these we need to get. Base cabinet, two bin. Base cabinet, double door and two drawer. I'm hitting control, grabbing a bunch of them. Base cabinet, double door sink unit, accumulating them, base cabinet filler, check out your previews, that's what it's going to look like in your cabinetry, base cabinet single door and drawer, base cat, oh, excuse me, looks like the countertops are in a different area, let's open all these, this is all we're going to get right now, okay, let those upload, give them a second, did five, four or five of them at once. Let's go back. We're still in the insert ribbon, load family tab, panel. Let's go to countertops. I went back one step here. Now we're going to get the countertop L shape with the sinkhole two here. Um, that's the only one in here. And we're going to get the upper cabinets from a different area. Got that one, one last one to load in our C drive. Let's go to, I think this one's in wall cabinets. Yes, it is upper in the wall cabinets. Upper cabinet, double door wall. There we go. Open. Now there's one last one to get um, from our chapter nine directory, especially from, um, so I, Remember, I was telling you how to get between here and where you downloaded the ones for this chapter. Just remember how to do that. Go back to the ones we just did for this, cha this chapter only. And we're going to bring one more in. It's called corner base filler. It's right here. Okay. Open that. Now we're going to start placing stuff. So we're going to add the countertop, architecture tab, component. Start there. Let's start typing in counter. Go selectable. Let's bring it in close ish here. Countertops in. Hit escape twice. Let's select the countertop. Now we have some options in here. Grips. Let's bring this all the way down here. Um, I think it really kind of just wants an intersection at wall, which is probably good enough. Um, you don't have to get this perfect. 
can definitely get more surgical with this. So we stretch the countertop out. And we're going to add our base cabinet double door unit 30 inch under the sinkhole. So let's go back to component. Um, let me start with base. Base cabinet, double door sink unit 30 inch. Um, let's see, there they are for sinks. Base cabinet, there it is, right here. Mine the title, 30 inch. Let's place it, it's gonna be a hidden line. Let's get it just close. Just pretend it's right there. Um, you can move this now, later, say move, you know, let's say five inches. Maybe it's a little off, you want it totally centered. Um, you can align it first to this. You know, you can say, I want this to align here. And then you can say, okay, I wanna move it one inch to the right. Should have double quotes. Looks pretty close to centered. Let's even say, oh, eyeball on it. Let's move it half an inch. Looks even more centered. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we got two options in our, in our kitchen. Um, we're going to add an elevation view here to better look at this. So we're going to go to view, elevation, change it to interior elevation right here. We're gonna start by going to the north, hover towards it, it will flip. That looks good. Hit escape, grab our view, turn this one on too. So we got a west into north. Um, let's grab our entirety of this view. Let's grab one view at a time, this one. Um, Instead of going to our project browser, finding where it's buried, it's in here. It's probably easier just to go in our properties here. Select the view. Let's change its name down here. Um, I don't have it selected. I don't select it. It's going to go to some default name. Let's call it Kitchen North. Okay. Hit escape. Select the West one. Same thing, it's properties, call it Kitchen West. Okay, now we have them better named. Let's go to see where the views are looking. I don't want it to quite see that far. I do kind of want it to see a little further past the wall, why not? This one, I don't want it to see all this necessarily, possibly, maybe that's good enough. See the outside of the wall is fine. Oops. Click the view, change its range. Left and right, change its depth. I don't really want to see outside of the, the wall. The wall's fine. Perfect. Um, let's take a look at one. And take a look at the West Vision Kitchen. Um, it's showing us what we would see exactly in there. Um, so we're going to place a component with this in mind. Um, let's do that right now. Um, we're add component, base cabinet, single door and drawer. And the 24 inch, here it is. I'll just hover on it for a bit so you can see the type, and the size. And it's not letting me do it in this view, interesting. We'll use this view in a minute. Um, I'll go to level one floor plan again. Let's add it right here. Okay, hit escape. Let me align it. Let me turn on my thin lines again. Let me select it. Let me align it to this. I'll select the item to align. Hit align. 
line to this, that. Okay, so it's aligned to the front. Let's just say we want to do that. Now it's saying we can go to Kitchen West and uh, we can totally um, move it a little bit. So I got it in the wrong direction. Interesting. Um, let's try adding it again. That's why we're doing the kitchen views. So you can better rotate it. So if I go to Kitchen West, it's in the right orientation now. So when I was placing it, I was hitting the space bar so I could flip it both directions. So now I have it in the right spot. We'll verify it here. Um, I'm gonna turn this to realistic so it's easier to see. Let's turn it to fine detail. Here we go. So it's basically saying you can flip it like that. We're gonna do a one inch counter overhang. So what that means is We're going to go back to the Kitchen West. We're going to move this one inch. That's all. Um, I think this is the right one. I'm double checking that. Yep, that'll be fine. And now we're going to add more of them. We're going to copy the cabinet so there's a total of four. So let's grab this. We're going to say copy. Go surgically in the endpoint right here. We're going to copy that cabinet so it's coincident. Copy it again, base point so it's coincident. And then we're going to copy it one more time, base point. So it's coincident. So we have all of our cabinets in here. I have the wrong type. Um, mine should be double door cabinets. So we could do that again real quick. These are single door cabinets. Let's just run through that real quick again. Component, base cabinet, double door and two drawer in our casework. Double door and two drawer. And they're 36 inch. Here's the more the correct one. Let's hit space to flip it. Add it. Let's go to our kitchen west to surgically move it with an offset on the counter here by one inch. Move. Pick somewhere out in space and just type in one inch. Got our offset there. Back to level one. Select it. Copy it. One at a time. We're going to copy so there's four total. One. Um, let's hit copy again. We can say multiple. Make this quicker. Endpoint surgical there. Multiple enables it to remain open. Now we have all the cabinets. This is the right one they wanted. Good practice. And here they all are in this interior elevation view. That's what it, about what it should look like. All right, we got those placed. And we're going to go to past page 477. We're going to add an upper cabinet. So I'll hit save. We're getting close to the end of this chapter. Um, we already loaded this up, so let's go to place component again. And I'm going to start by searching, since there's so many cabinet casework in here, we're going to say upper, to help us find it quicker. And we're going to pick 36 inch one. Bring it in here. There it goes. Um, 
we're going to center it so it's coincident over the top of this one. The base cabinetry and we can also align it move it which we we'll probably will have to do let's just pretend we got to do that place it there i select the upper cabinet and let's align it let's say this is what i want it to align to this is what i want to align there we go check in kitchen west we align well my elevation view interior let's do the same grab that I copy Multiple selected. Let's get surgical by picking the endpoint here, endpoint there, and let's make four of them. Done with that, we have all of our upper cabinets in the kitchen. So the last step of this chapter, we're gonna add some alternative tiling and the flooring. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with this, getting the sketch to work right, but it was a, if you get any glitches with the drawing, the project, and it's not cooperating in sketch mode, save, and reopen the project file and a lot of times you'll be all good. That's all that I had going on. Um, we're basically gonna add a, a tile floor system into this area, which is similar to what we did on chapter six. Um, we're still in the level one floor, floor plan. And let's see, go to the modify tab, excuse me here. Modify split face first, and then we paint it. Now let's make sure I have my face selected, which is hover on it. That's the floor I wanna select there. I'm gonna start by sketching with a line. Um, I'm gonna grab pick line. Let's do that. Make our magenta line. And this last one I'm going to do just kind of randomly, right? Uh, right about here. Let's trim it up. Pick the two lines I want to keep. Same. Hopefully I got it closed this time and no duplicates. Let's find out. Yep. So we have our split, split face. Um, it's separated out. We're ready to put tile on that area of the floor plan. And that is pretty much the end of the chapter. We're going to do that on page 41. We're going to start by editing the tile. So we're going to go to manage materials. Type in tile. And we're looking for porcelain four inch, okay? And all we're gonna do is click this from what I can tell. It applies the four inch and we're gonna go with that option as the only one on step three on page 41 looks like to me. So that's ready to go, we edited that tile. Uh, now we're going to go to the Modify tab to Paint. And we're going to select that tile. Paint it to that area. And that is it. Um, we got our kitchen without carpet. Take a look at it in 3D. Or possibly, let's try a camera view. Take a look at our kitchen. There we go. Let's do fine mode so we can see the tile. Doesn't really show the tile all that much. I orbited a little too far there. Try that again. There's our kitchen with tile. Um, it doesn't really show the tile in realistic mode, but that is our final product.
that's the end of chapter nine. We'll see you in chapter 10.